you want to write your infrastructure in CDK, but you have an extensive library of cloud formation, and you know a migration is not a free lunch and can't easily be automated, unfortunately. So my name is Philip Garvey, and I work as a platform architect at Rio, a company based in Munich. And in this talk, I will show you some patterns and tools that can be used to migrate from CloudFormation templates to CDK and how you can do that in smaller chunks. So you don't have to do it all at once, but you can do that step by step. And that means you don't have to invest too much time initially, but can still leverage the power of CDK. So my example project is a simple Fargate service that runs behind a load balancer and root 53, and it has a code pipeline um, to deploy it. And first I will migrate the, the pipeline template, then I will include the infrastructure template until it can turn it into a native CDK application. And finally, then I take advantage of the CDK. And I want to show you the tools and practices as an example so that you can adopt them for yourself because every project is a bit different, right? You can also look up my example on my GitHub repository. So the first step is to migrate the pipeline template. What I did is I placed the CloudFormation template for the code pipeline into a CDK application, but I did not change anything um, of the infrastructure. I did not change the CloudFormation template here. Why is that a good first step? Uh, first of all, the pipeline is stateless. There are maybe some build artifacts, uh, but they are ephemeral and you can easily uh, recreate them. The good thing is also that you can set up such a pipeline in parallel. So you can deploy to another template and to another stack or even to a different uh, account. And with that means it's less risk than if we change something on a server that runs in production. So let's have a look at the code to see that in action. So here we have our um, CloudFormation template for the pipeline. We have the pipeline itself with a couple of stages. So first we get the source code from GitHub. Um, and then we have a build stage where the Docker build is created and finally deploy it. And the build spec itself is also straightforward. First, uh, I do a Docker build, then I give it a proper tag, and finally push it to the ECR repository. And here's the Go CloudFormation template for the infrastructure, which contains the task definition, but also the service and the cluster and all the other resources that are needed. So now I changed that into a CDK application and I have now a new pipeline stack that is part of my CDK application. And here it looks pretty much the same like we have seen before in the CloudFormation template, there's a source action. And what is new here is the synth action. This is needed to actually build and synthesize uh, the CDK application so that we can get uh, the CloudFormation templates synthesized at the end. And here's the build action like we had before and also the deployment stage. And then they have to think about, do you want to keep the ECR repository that uh, you had before maybe uh, in that example, um, or you create a new one or would we see them later, you can also use the one that is created by CDK Bootstrap. And this is important here. Uh, enable the feature toggle in the CDK JSON, um, which is needed for the CDK pipeline construct and also needed if you run a CDK Bootstrap in your account. So the next step is that I include the infrastructure template into my CDK application. With that, it feels then more like a CDK application. And I can also create some tests to see if everything um, is like I wanted. So I can ensure the compatibility. So I can check for some logical ideas that they stay the same or some attributes that are important to me. And this is 
a preparation already for the next step, for the refactoring that we do in the next one. And we can show you also that it leads to some benefits, to some advantages uh, in the pipeline itself. Let's get back to the code. So this is now the new infrastructure stack. It contains the CFN include construct, where we point just to the CloudFormation template. And don't, there are two CFN include constructs, one in the core package and one in the CloudFormation include and use later one, uh, that's the correct one. And with that, we have access to all the resources that are part of the CloudFormation template. And here, just change some, some parameters. And so it's important that you maybe run a linter on your CloudFormation template because if include will uh, yeah, stop here if it doesn't comply complain, uh, completely um, to the CloudFormation spec, even if CloudFormation don't uh, or would accept that file, um, but maybe you get some warnings or errors that the string should be a number or the other way around. So in the pipeline stack, stack, there is a new stage that is basically a wrapper around all the stacks that should be deployed. In our case, it's just the, the infrastructure stack, but you can also add more here. And also give them some, or have some additional um, uh, parameters. The pipeline itself now means I could delete uh, the, the whole deployment block and replace it with that single line. So here I tell the pipeline, this is my application stage that needs to be deployed and it generates then the deployment steps for me automatically with all, for all the infrastructure or the, for all the stacks that are part of that stage. And if you want to deploy that in multiple accounts, just duplicate the line. And here we can also check for some tests or create some tests to, to see if everything is like expected. As I said, we can check for specific attributes that are very important to us that should not change. So the third step then is that we can turn it into a native CTK application. What I did is I extracted some resources from, from the templates and pulled it into the CDK application. So you can do that at once if it's maybe a smaller template, uh, but also step by step depends on, on the uh, dependencies. And with that, you can get a benefit already from, from higher level constructs, which are part of the CDK library, like for example, the AWS ECS patterns. And it simplifies our pipeline because I now use the CDK asset. That means CDK automatically builds my Docker image and uploads it to an ECR repository. So let's switch back to the code. Here we have the infrastructure uh, stack again, and it contains now all the constructs for our service. And I get here the container image from asset and I point to the uh, folder that contains our, uh, the Docker file for the application. So, and whenever I do a CDK synth or CDK deploy, it automatically builds the Docker image and uploads it to an ACR repository that is then provided by the CDK bootstrap command. Another important part here, if you do that, is that CDK generates its own logical IDs. But that's not always um, what you want because you, for, uh, for a uh, stateful resource, it makes sense to keep the logical IDs so CloudFormation will not replace that resource. And uh, with that little trick, you can keep that logical ID. You just need to go to the default child of your, of your construct. And then you can override the logical ID and keep the name that you want. And in the pipeline itself, it gets even better because now I could remove also the, the build stage completely because that is now done as part of the synth action. And it will automatically, as I said, build the Docker image and uploads that image to ECR. And if you want to do a diff 
to see if my uh, what are the changes that should be deployed. Um, I do a little trick. So if I go to the um, AppTS, then normally if you do a CDK dev, we'll just compare the pipeline stack, but that's not what you want in that case. If we want to check what's uh, the difference on the infrastructure, I do that little trick to, to add that line temporarily to see what is the actual difference before I commit my changes. And finally, I can take advantage of what CDK gives me and also the CDK ecosystem. I, here in my example, I add uh, some auto-scaling for my ECS service. I also add alarms by using a third party or an open source um, library called CDK Watchfuls. But you can add whatever you want and uh, whatever, you, whatever you might uh, think is, is useful for your application and you can use it from other um, open source libraries or you share some of some library within your company and I think that's the real power that comes with CDK. Again, go, let's go back to the code. So here the infrastructure stack again uh, with the task definition and the service and if we scroll down a bit uh, you can see the auto scaling. So that's just a few lines where I say pre scale my service until a max capacity of 10 and use the CPU utilization um, to, to scale up and down and try to target a utilization of 80%. And the watchful here, the construct here, here you have to provide an, either an, an email address or an SNS topic where the alarm should be sent to. And then see, Watchful checks my stack, uh, what's in there, and creates automatically um, all the alarms for, for the resources. So let's see what will be, will be generated. Just do a synth. And with that, um, uh, the, the watchful console checks for every resource that is part of my well, part of my stack, and here we have all the resources for the ECS service, and can see then also that it creates some resources for the auto scaling. And now comes the interesting part, because watchful will create an SNS topic where the alarms can be sent to for my, to my email address, it automatically creates also a CloudWatch dashboard with all the important metrics that are um, useful for the service. And then it checks what do we have in my stack and uh, creates the alarms like for CPU and u memory utilization for the service, but also for the load balancer uh, where it checks the target response time or some request errors. And that get automatically out of the box. So that's my migration toolbox where you can migrate from CloudFormation to CDK. And it showed you that you can, for example, rewrite everything from scratch. That could make sense sometimes, although it uh, takes the most effort. So um, like in the pipeline example, I think that's a good way to try that out. Uh, we, have, uh, we can do that in parallel um, without affecting a production service. But you can do that also as a hybrid stack. Like it showed um, with the infrastructure template, it can be included into the CDK application and you can extract, extract resources step by step and rewrite them then in, in the CDK application. And I think a good um, or the helpful thing is to, if you want to keep your stateful resources, is to that you are able to override the logical idea. I think that's uh, very important because you don't want to get uh, your RDS databases or the S3 buckets destroyed. And finally, you then can also benefit from the higher level constructs that are provided sometimes as part of the CDK library, but also if you look at cdkpatterns.com, for example, or some other open source libraries on GitHub. And with that, I want to thank you for your time today. Also, thank you for filling out the session survey. Bye.